Okay, welcome back, folks. Uh, another video from me getting getting on my one a day, uh, working out quite well at the moment. Quite enjoying it. Um, uh, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, indoors today, uh, and just doing like a bit of a, a piece to camera. We're indoors because today apparently is the day that my neighbour is going to chop up like a thousand trees into logs for the for the rest of the year. By all accounts, noisy chainsaw action going on. Um, I had this idea for a, a, a vlog um, a little while ago, and again, it's finding the time to do it, of which I've got loads of time now, so that's all good. Um, I probably would have just, one day, I probably have vlogged about something similar, like, do you remember blogs, who used to do a lot of them, uh, and read a lot of them, but I, can't, I still do them, I like them, they're good fun, like quite cathartic, writing my thoughts down, um, sort of in black and white, but vlogging is, is the way forwards, I guess. Um, and I, I want to just talk about uh, sort of being self-employed and, and running a, a small business that, you know, kind of a one man band that employs other people, uh, you know, for little bits and pieces here and there. Because um, it's something that I've really, really enjoyed doing and it's really satisfying as well. I know for a lot of people, instructor type people, it's kind of it's probably a, a bit of a goal of theirs to, to run their own thing um rather than working for other people uh, and the thing that brought it to mind actually was i was watching something on youtube we're probably all watching a lot of youtube right now as so we can we can't go out, outside very much and it was just a quote and i'm going to just read the quote off the computer in a second and it kind of it just made me think um about this kind of this kind of work really uh, and the quote was everything in life is easy unless you want to be good at it if you want to do something well, it's really effing hard. And kind of excuse the language, I've, I've made it a little bit politer. And it just kind of resonated with me a bit, to be honest, because, uh, you know, I'd call myself a, a climbing instructor. And it's really easy to be a climbing instructor. Honestly, it, it is. It's mega easy. But to be good at it is like loads harder. Sorry if you just heard a beep, I've had a, an email. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to chat a bit about sort of what work has gone into it for, for me from my point of view and that's all it is it's my point of view you speak to you know other um climbing instructor type people that run their own business they might think i'm chatting absolute rubbish yeah but um may, maybe uh, you'll get a few words of wisdom from me and if you know if you chat to them you get some words of wisdom from them as well uh we all do things differently and that's really important you know really important um, I guess this is probably coming across uh, now because one, I've got the time and two, just been doing it a while and I'm a bit older uh, and got some stuff to say, but you know, if you, if you like it, great. If you, if you don't like it, well, you, yeah, uh, just ignore it, I suppose. Um, but I'm going to talk about that obviously from the climbing side, because that's what I do. I'm a climbing and mountaineering instructor. I love climbing. I love the mountains and, and hill walking and all that as well. Yeah, I'm not a kayaker. Uh, but I'm sure most of what I say is absolutely uh, applicable to if you wanted to do this for kayaking as well. Back when I first started, most people had to be like multidiscipline. Uh, and it held me back a little bit at the start of my career because uh, I'm just not that into stuff like kayaking. And that was a really big one back then. It's a bit easier these days to uh, specialise in stuff, climbing, kayaking, mountain biking, whatever it was. Um, or whatever it is now that you, that you love to do. Um, so it made me work really hard actually, um, to, to get the work initially, um, because I had to work a little bit harder than if I could do all sorts of different bits and pieces. Uh, so that, that'll be my focus is obviously the climbing and, and the first point, and you'll have to excuse me looking at my laptop every now and then I've actually been a little bit less, uh, on the winging it side today and made a couple of notes just to look at every now and then. I love winging it. It's, it's like great fun. It's part of the challenge of doing these videos. Um, but for stuff like this, I just needed a little bit more structure. But the first point was love it. Love what you do. Um, climbing for me, it, it's everything. You know, if I'm not climbing, I'm thinking about climbing uh, or training for climbing or, you know, doing something related to it. Um, yeah, I've got other hobbies such as, you know, doing other photography and, and bits like that. But climbing is just, it's, that's how I what, identify myself as a climber, right? So. You, you've got to go out there and get the experience. So if you want to be a climbing instructor, 
then you need to love climbing, right? And hopefully you do. Um, and you, you go out and get loads of experience. You, you climb all over you know, the country, all over the world, uh, and you, you get all these experiences that then gives you something to share with everyone and you know, be enthusiastic about it. And if you love it, being enthusiastic is kind of pretty easy. If you if you like people, I guess I do see some people who, you know, are climbing instructor types. They don't really seem to actually enjoy being out with people and and enthusing about uh, their their passion. And I just kind of think, well, why are you doing it then? If you if you're not having a good time, uh, what's the point? Is it just a job to you? Is that okay? Well, it probably is, isn't it? I mean, what's wrong with it? If you know, but that I mean goes back to that quote, doesn't it? That they're probably doing something uh and it's finding it fairly easy but are they doing it well uh, maybe i don't know i can it's really easy for me to go off on tangents i love going off on a tangent um but by going out and getting all this experience and then just being absolutely excited by it it kind of gives you loads to chat about and it gives you the confidence to to uh you know when you're teaching something you can relate it to things that you've done and confidence is key, isn't it? Uh, especially when you're doing stuff like we're doing that, you know, has the potential to be really unsafe. Um, people look at you and they want you to be confident. If you don't come across as confident, then that's not going to instill them with that confidence either, is it? So to go out and do loads of whatever that thing is that you're into, climbing in this case, and just have fun doing it. The key then, right, is to, because this is from a, a running your own business point of view, is how, how do you get those people to come to you in the first place? Well, for me, it's kind of social media absolutely um, made the business uh, that I have, okay? I was kind of lucky that this was some time ago now and there was nowhere near as much competition on, on Facebook, on Instagram, all that kind of stuff that there is now. It's much harder now, so you have to be even better at it. But when you're out doing these things, you know, use social media to your advantage. Put good pictures on, engaging pictures. Put some good content on with it as well. Not just a picture, but I've seen someone I know who does like top tips on Instagram and stuff. And they get loads of engagement. That's brilliant. It really seems to work for them. So you've got to find your own little niches of what works with you and what, what you kind of buy into and then get it on social media, get a good presence on, on Facebook, on Insta and uh, Twitter, if you like that. There's probably some other ones that people use now that I don't even know about. And I guess YouTube as well that I'm kind of getting into now. Uh, and you've got, I think it kind of leads into a website as well. Having a good website is pretty vital, isn't it? It doesn't have to be anything flash, but um, it's, it's got to look pretty clean and good, hasn't it? If you're, you could be a really good climbing instructor, but have an awful website, and people aren't just going to find out that you're a really good climbing instructor, Sally, because you know what it's like. You don't, it doesn't have to be for climbing. You're trying to buy a, a new pair of sunglasses, I don't know, or whatever. You look on a website. If the website looks rubbish, it's just an immediate turn off, isn't it? So I'd say it doesn't have to be flash, but making it sort of clean and good looking is key. And that leads into my sort of third point, which is having good photos. If you've got a load of awful photos, on your website, people just are gonna switch off pretty quick, aren't they? I know I certainly do. Good photos, uh, you know, partly that's gonna be people smiling, having fun, nice colors, those kind of friendly vibes and stuff like that. You don't need to be like a, a photographic master, um, but it, it really does help if, if you can take some half decent shots. So I just want—I just picked up my camera here to show you that I, this is what I use because people ask me about photography a little bit. I am by no means an expert. I'm someone who enjoys it, but you know, I've got a half decent eye for it, but there's far better photographers than me out there, that's for sure. Uh, but I use this camera. It's a Sony A6000. It's actually, it's a, a fairly old camera these days, but it still takes nice photos. Because I'm into it, I've got a few different lenses that, I, that I've changed depending on what I'm getting photos of. But, if you've got a half decent camera, you can actually at least have unpixelated, nice looking photos on, on your website and on your social media. Phones can be pretty good these days, um, but it's hard. It's probably harder to get a real quality shot with your phone, especially if the light's not perfect and stuff. So 
camera, I think, is, is a pretty worthwhile investment. And then doing something with it as well, you know, you've, you've got to take a half decent shot, you know, composition wise. And there's loads of videos on YouTube and all sorts of tutorials of how to do that. And we've got a bit of time now. So if that's something you think might be a bit lacking in, in your um uh, toolbox then and go and watch some videos and, and and learn some learn some stuff i spend a lot a bit of time well i say a bit of time quite a lot of time editing photos as well so i use photoshop and lightroom for, for doing that which costs like 10 pounds a, a month um but for, for me as well as well as being a really good investment business wise i just enjoy doing it as well so if, if you've got a camera a, a half decent camera you can shoot in raw as well uh, it will absolutely transform what you can do um, with your editing. So this isn't a camera tutorial because there's flipping far better people to go and watch on YouTube than me chatting about it. But if you've got a camera that can shoot in RAW and maybe you've never used it in RAW before, well, now's the time to have a play. You can go in your garden or just take a shot out the window. There's anything of your coffee machine. There's so, there's so many things you can take nice photos of with a bit of thought. Right. Uh, so, so use this time to your advantage. Uh, you know, it's a flipping challenging time at the moment, isn't it, for, for so many people. But use it to your advantage and, and learn some new skills. And that kind of, by luck, really leads into point four. Keep learning. Um, so loads of people are learning new skills at the moment, aren't they? Uh, so for me, it's all this video stuff, which I haven't really done before. Um, it's it's certainly uh, oh, there's so much learning to be done. I'm watching loads of videos to try and get a bit better at it. Certainly in the editing, I've learned a few things already to try and improve my videos because I know they're they're pretty basic. Um, but you know, it's for qualifications as well. So like I said the the one I use is my is the mountaineering and climbing instructor qualification, uh, and I've had that like seven or so years old, um, seven or so years now which makes me feel old, like I'm turning 39 this year, uh, which I start, started to feel old, you know, didn't care about turning 30. When I turn 40, that'll be a big deal to me, I reckon. Um, if you think I don't look that old, then, you know, it's moisturising, get moisturiser kids and look after yourself in the sun. Um, if you've got a garden at the moment, you might be doing loads of sunbathing with all this time, wear sunscreen, bad for you otherwise, isn't it, all this UV. Um, this is my little top tip for your health tip, public service announcement. But keep learning. Okay, so I did my MCI, great, but it hasn't stopped then. Since then, I've done coaching qualifications. I've done various bits of uh, professional development uh, of all sorts, whether that's learning about uh, some geology, some new rope work stuff, how to be a better teacher. Uh, there's just, oh, there's so much out there, isn't there? It's just, I feel, I feel like if you think you've learned everything, I just like giving up really, haven't you? There's always new stuff to, to learn and, and improve upon. And like I say, go off on tangents. So it could well be your photography stuff. It could well be your, uh, you know, coaching skills. You, your imagination is your limit really, isn't it, on that one? But just, just never stop. And then point number five is kind of, is related to having your own business, but it's kind of related to that journey to it as well, because um, like a lot of people who have their own business, I, I started off working in outdoor centres and I sort of full time employment, um, you know, right from earning £40 per month, uh, sorry, per month, £40 per week working in France. I had, a, I had an absolute blast, but 40 quid a week, I was yeah, not a lot of cash, is it? Um, through to being sort of chief instructor at a centre, then going sort of freelance and then getting bits of self-employed work and and the point is to be good at your job every single day it, it just matters so much in that freelancing stage it, that's when you kind of build your name and you know hopefully for good reasons so go that extra mile work really hard um and give every single person a really good time you know if you're freelancing for an outdoor center you know, learn every kid's name in that group. So the little things like that, that, you know, the teachers in that case will notice and they'll report back to your your boss and say, oh, we had a great day with Mr. or Mrs. X, whoever it was. Uh, they, they just were, were so good. They were just cut above the rest. That's what you want to be. You want to be that person. You want to be that, you don't want to be that person. It's like, uh, yeah, the day was all right. I don't remember the person's name. Um, they didn't really seem to want to be there. Don't be that person. 
do what you can to, to get noticed positively and build your name. It's just absolutely crucial. You keep getting the call then and you get more and more work, which makes your life less and less stressful. But it does flow into being self-employed, right? Because you, you just have to give everything every single day. The time you don't is the time that your clients might have a not so good day and then they won't recommend you to other people. And that's kind of key, isn't it? You want them to come back to you perhaps again and again for, for various progressions. Uh, but also you want them to tell their mates, you want them to share that cool picture you took because you've got half decent photography and they're like, oh, look at that shot. And they'll share that to their Facebook, their Insta, or whatever. And then more people see it. So these, these kind of points are all interlinked, aren't they? But give everything every day and it, and it will be noticed. Um, yeah, so really, really work hard at that. It, honestly, I get so much pleasure from it, good reports back from people I've employed for, for a day, a week or whatever, you know, when the clients come back and said they had an ace day with whomever that might be. It's really satisfying. And funnily enough, that person, they, they stay at the top of my list, right, of people to employ. Um, there's loads of people out there, especially I, living in North Wales, there's loads of qualified people here who I know will give a nice safe time to people. But that's just not enough. That's not enough just to be safe. You have to give me a safe time, but those clients need to be having like loads of fun as well. Uh, you know, don't mean like clown type fun. Lots of, it doesn't have to just be jokes or whatever, but just having an ace time and, and loving life and getting so much out of the day that oh, they're just enthused for forever. And it's the best feeling when you've had clients out, maybe you've taught them to lead climb over the week, and then in a year's time, you bump into them on the crag and they're doing stuff. That's so satisfying that you've opened up all these adventures to people or people drop you an email just to say thank you. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, it's, it's just a, it's a privilege to, to do this kind of work. Um, so that's my kind of what I wanted to chat about there. Um, I, I'm a mentor for the Association of Mountaineering Instructors. So I work with um, MCI trainees going through to their assessment to try and help them become like quality instructors, not just passing assess at the assessment, although that's vital, they have to, um, more people be better than that, right? So I, I, and it's something I'm really passionate about. I love helping people get into this kind of uh, profession because it's flipping ace, yeah? Uh, I, I wouldn't change it for anything. It's tough, right? It is tough, especially at this, this time. People who are struggling have every sympathy of mine. Because I know it's difficult. At one point, some years ago now, I remember chatting to an ex-girlfriend and just having, you know, a, a real conversation of like, I don't know if I can make this work. It, it's so hard, especially somewhere, as I say, in North Wales, there's so much competition that I was really thinking about like jacking it in and getting, I don't know, some random other job. I don't know how it'd be because, you know, I don't know what else to do other than do what I love and, and teach climbing and or the mountain leader course and all that kind of thing. But thankfully I, I stuck at it and I made it work. And it was hard work, really hard work. And it, it still is hard work because I want to be the, the best that I can possibly be. Right, so, so do stick at it. Do, do use your time to, to your benefit really um, as, as best you can. Um, but you know, the reason for going down that waffle of being a mentor for AMI is that I love helping people uh, to the best of my ability. So, you know, if you do have questions, you know, chuck them in the comments below, drop me an email, whatever. And I'm always happy to help people, like I say, to the best of my ability. Um, but don't don't just ask me, ask other people. There's loads of approachable um, self-employed mountaineer instructors out there. Uh, and most of them are like really helpful. So speak to people. I mean, that's part of the thing, isn't it? Networking, I'm rubbish at networking. Um, but you know, if, if you can do that and you know, get some advice off people and just be the best that you can be and build up that good name, you'll get loads of work. And then when you start to do your own self-employed stuff, it's those same sort of principles that, that lead through to it all. Like it's quite hard to to chat about this stuff and, and open yourself up on, you know, talking, as I said, to, to your iPhone and putting it on YouTube. Um, so I am kind of prepared to get a bit rinsed for this waffle, uh, but hopefully it's been good um, and, and useful. Uh, and please do fire away, like I say, with any questions at all.
Um, I'm going to sit in the sun for a bit because I, uh, you know, it's hard staying off the mountains and off the crags and all that. So at least we can get some sun sitting outside and have a have a coffee. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, click the like button. Find us on Insta uh, and Facebook if you haven't. Just search JD Mountain Skills. Uh, and more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.